Hello everyone, it's me, Janky Pizu, coming in with a new video. Um, I say Janky Pizu, changed my name on Instagram to Jizzle Fizzlips for a good reason and only temporarily because I am the Janky, not the Jizzles. But look what I've got here it's a magazine with the, all the best writers. It's called First Page, and look, Jizzle Fizzlips. What is it? Techno Fiends. God, it's bloody massive. Yeah! It's like, it's called First Page, so it's the first page from my story. Um, but there's no like contact information, so I thought I'd put Jizzle Fizzlips there. Also, if you Google Jizzle Fizzlips, I'm the one and only. Um, anyway, here I am, Janky Jizzles, coming in with a new video. It's been a bloody long time, hasn't it? Where was I? I was hiding in the north from Corona. I don't realise I'm no bloody good to anyone if I'm hiding away. So here I am, back in Berlin. This is my new kitchen. Very magical. Very happy to be here. Um, and yeah, making another video. I thought they were a bit silly, but people are like, where are the videos? So here we are. Um, maybe I should get my microphone. I'm not sure what the sound's like here, but let's see. Okay, I'm just gonna chat on. So what I wanted to talk about this time around is a favorite topic of mine, dreams. Now, something we all experience, something very key to witchcraft practices, as well as many other practices as well, like dreams. So since Corona, I've been having a little witchy reading circle and this was gonna be the topic of our fourth meeting corresponds with the element of water but the group seems to have disbanded for a while so this is what I'm going to talk about but like dreams there are many different like subject categories or fields you know you could take a scientific perspective of dreams you could take a witchy perspective you can take you know looking at like indigenous practices so it's good to look at them and also kind of good practice which kind of on the one hand, like decolonize your practice without cultural appropriation, but learning from others. So, where am I going with this? It's actually dreams. As I said, it's my favorite topic. It's through dreams that I've actually got into witchcraft. Well, dreams and psychedelics. I'm not really gonna go into this issue much right now, but so basically I'm someone who since a very early age has had chronic sleep paralysis. Maybe a psychologist would have a lot to say about that. But for those that don't know, sleep paralysis. You're in bed, it's night time, and your kind of mind wakes up, but your body does not, because when you're sleeping, your kind of body becomes paralyzed, so you don't act out your dreams. And in this strange state between waking and sleeping, quite often hallucinate strange spirits coming into your room, classic example is like being frozen to your bed with a kind of soul sucking dark shadow above you and you can't scream you can't move um a little bit traumatizing i'm not gonna lie um but it's through these kind of experiences that got me like researching strange spirits of the dreamscape kind of cross-cultural um connections or similarities um, got me down the route of reading about incubi, succubi, and the rest is history. So that's where we start and why dreams are important. Now, as I said, I've had sleep paralysis for a very long time. Not had it for a while, and it was actually through being more conscious of my dreams, taking the time to try and remember them, record them, attempting lucid dreaming that has stopped me from having it. I mean, I used to get it a lot, for example, when you jet lagged, or back in the sweet K days when I wouldn't sleep very much, then it would come a lot. Battery temporarily died. Just gonna crack on. So back to teenage sleep paralysis, like what the fuck is this? It seemed kind of magical. And I was saying that it was through remembering being more conscious of my dreams that it stopped happening. But also a practice of 
not looking at it as something necessarily negative. So when I was first in Berlin, crazy acid days, um, there was one night, I was having a lot of sleep paralysis, one night like, you know what, I'm not afraid of the darkness. If anyone's coming here, if you've got any messages, I'm listening, I'm not afraid, I'm gonna look in the dark. And that night, I had a dream where I was in my room, there was a chair in my room, like in real life, near my bed. And all night I was being visited by different characters, some with wisdom, some wanting to ravage me, some a bit creepy. Um, but I feel, so like before these times, I used to try not to dream, smoking a lot of herb. Um, but since then, you know, looking into the dark, realizing it might be not, not be so dark, it's quite an effective strategy. Saying, oh, oh, I don't have corona, I hope not. Drinking a cup of tea. Um, so, how do dreams relate to witchcraft? Well, again, looking at these dark, shadowy types. Really great article that I recommended for the witch circle. Emma Wilby, a bit more on the academic side. Burchard's Worms, Strigae of Witches, blooming egg need to get my title straight but I'll put a little link down below. Basically Emma Wilby, best known for a book Visions of Isabel Gowdy who's a Scottish witch in like 15th century, burnt the stake, very eloquent in how she described her witchy activities which were so specific that probably didn't come from the inquisitors that's a big issue with like looking at um, witch trial narratives is like how much was, you know, put in the mouths of the witches or women by the inquisitors, you know, like, did you go to the Sabbat? Did you kiss the goat's bum? And you're being tortured like, yeah, yeah, I did, I kissed the goat's bum. Whereas Isabel Gowdy had some very specific things that weren't in any of the texts. So she's an interesting character. But anyway, minor diversion. So this text looks at, during the Inquisition, I need to reread these texts, sorry. I'm not really well of information. But anyway, during the Inquisition, there was a shift from ideas of whether witchcraft was seen as, or like going to the Sabbat, joining the, you know, the night flight wild hunt of Diana, whether it just happened in real life or took place in the realm of dreams. And so, when it happened in the realm of dreams, wasn't really something that got you burnt at the stake, but it's through the shifting of the witch being kind of a spectral figure who would come and take women or also men, take them away at the night versus actual existing people who would physically go there, you know, it would have a material reality. And if it's an actual person with a material reality, then you can put them on trial, then they're like a legalised, codified entity, person that you can put on trial, you can put at the stake and burn them alive, not that you would want to if you're a sane human being. So, this article, I'd recommend it, I'm not really summarising it very well, but what I'm trying to say is, dreams are important for witchcraft because they say that you know, you can get to the Sabbat in your sleep. Also, I guess, visions, prophecies can take place in your dreams. Um, does it matter whether the Sabbat exists in real life or in your dreams? All these big questions of, you know, the material or the mystical perspective. Um, astral travel, that's a thing. Should have done my research, but I was just too keen to get started talking on camera. I mean, I do have notes. This is something I wanted to talk about for a while as well. I really wanted to make a dream zine. I could talk about it for ages, but you, dear listener, need some focus. Okay. Next for the Witchy Reading Circle, what we recommended was a podcast episode to listen to from Sarah James, a uh, lady from the UK, Hastings, who is an independent researcher. Um, looks into a lot of like lucid dreaming, dream incubation and like the healing power of dreams. 
She spoke at a culture conference here in Berlin with Carl Smith and together, so I think, so Carl Smith is a very techy, mystical DMT guy and they blend their perspectives together trying to make some kind of virtual reality lucid dreaming game um, and Sarah does a lot of research into the ancient practices of, I'm chatting on, the dream practices of ancient Greece. Um, what's his name? Aslepius. Acle Aslepius, I think his name was. Um, would have temples where people go and like very much belief in like the healing power of dreams. You might go there for a healing dream. Um, I listened to this podcast episode, so it's on the Thoth Hermes podcast, which is kind of a funny podcast in terms of a cult podcast offering. There's quite a spectrum and from like cheesy, commercial, like witchy American style versus this Thoth Hermes is on the other side of the spectrum of dusty, ceremonial, very like magi, male energy of the fraternities and the orders. Um, also some funny music choices, but you know, I'm not gonna, not gonna critique a fellow wizard. Anyway, on this episode, she talks also about a special goddess who I would like to discuss now. Funny, because I can never remember how to say her name. Menemazina, Menemazi, Menemazina, I'm going for. Goddess of memory, who, you know, Trying to recall your dreams is very important for dream practices. So back in the ancient Greek days, Menemazina would be called upon to help remember. Funny thing, so she, since listening to this podcast episode, which I think it came out on like the 8th of March, it was just before Corona. I just got back to Berlin and I listened to this podcast and in this, I'd never heard of Menemazina before in the same day picked up this flyer like no way no way um so there's this exhibition with abby warburg which he has this build atlas so he's kind of like tracing the development evolution of different symbolic forms and has all these different like i want to say tablets or like collections uh also it's kind of like get your memory going this exhibition, again, funny. I keep forgetting to go. She's the goddess of memory. I can never remember how to pronounce her name. Keep forgetting to go, but I'm not gonna miss it. I am chatting on. I'm a bit rusty from this video game. If anyone's listening, bless you for sticking with me. This is also, I have this on my dream altar. Oh yeah, let's talk about actual dreaming practices. Where am I going with this? Okay, the sun has returned, so as my train of thought, battery's gonna die. Um, so let's get to actual dreaming practices. So I'm sure most of you are aware of the phenomenon of lucid dreaming, which is when you are in a dream, you become conscious and aware that you're dreaming, and as a result, you can control your dreams or change them a little bit. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen Waking Life, that's a good rotoscoped film to do dreaming. Also, when I was at the Zine Fest, I picked up this great thing, Lucid Dream Starter Pack, which has some tips. A lot of it actually is taken from, he seems to be the scientific authority on lucid dreaming, Stephen LaBerge, who got, I want to say, a PhD from Stanford University. Correct me if I'm wrong. But so, what are some techniques to try and make yourself conscious in the dream world? Um, reality checks. So in your waking life, you have to, for example, look at your watch, do the light switch and ask, am I dreaming? And if you are dreaming, you know, the clock might be going backwards, the light switch won't work. Um, so that's a technique. 
Truth be told, I haven't had much success lately in lucid dreaming, but I do have, I don't want to sound all high and mighty, but I feel like I have significant prophetic dreams. Um, the most difficult thing for me, and things I can advise you on, even though I say I've not had much success with lucid dreaming, and I guess fellow stoners will um, appreciate this, so my biggest issue, or what I try best at the moment, is just trying to remember my dreams. So. One of the number one things to encourage lucid dreaming is keeping a dream journal or recording your dreams. Now, personally, I find the linear written form first thing in the morning just doesn't work for me. As soon as I look at the page and try and write, you know, a full grammatically correct sentence, dreams are gone. So what I like to do is draw a dream map now, I've just moved into a place, so everything's in storage, so I don't have any to show you, but they do look a bit like this. This is something I made a while ago for the witch reading circle on dreaming. But So what you can do quickly is map down or draw symbols, maybe a few keywords, map the dream, and that way you don't have to go linear. And, you know, once you open up one little pocket of dream world, then it opens up others and you can get everything down quite quickly. So what I tend to do, set my alarm at least half an hour before I have to wake up and then, you know, if you're in a privileged position to be able to have an extra half an hour of sleep. Um, so half an hour before, then just close my eyes and try and return, pick on any little symbols and think about it and it tends to like expand the memory then I do the map. Um, and so, I actually had a funny dream once when I was trying to remember my dream about two years ago. I'd woken up half an hour before, went back kind of to sleep and Julian Vane, the British psychedelic chaos magician, came to me in my dreams and I was like, he's popped up, hello, what are you doing? Um, and I was like, Julian, not now, no, no, I'm trying to remember my dreams. And what Dream Julian said was, I find a very effective strategy is using a voice recorder for my dreams. And so with this wisdom, I have put it into practice. So voice recorder, phone, always on airplane mode when I go to sleep, because if you wake up, look at the time, see messages, poof, you're gone from the dream world back into your real life. So dream recorder, dream voice recorder. So I've got many voice recordings of my morning voice, like, and then we met Obama and we got taken hostage and out of nowhere comes. Yeah, I'm not gonna go into my personal dreams too much because that will be revealing. Also, from the magical perspective, the Jungian perspective on dreams, looking at archetypes, if you're interested, could be a good way to research. Also, you know, you might want to get some herbs. So I've got this it's called the Witching Hour, a lucid dreaming blend, and it's a tincture of yasmine, yasmine, jasmine, mugwort, dittany of Crete, vervain, and valerian root. Got it at Catland Bookshop in New York. It's a bit old, so it tastes a bit funny, but I try and take it. Also, personally, Thursday night is a good day for dreams. After doing research on witches, Sabbat, quite often they would go to the Sabbat on a Thursday night. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure if this is like the Christian imposition of symbolism, but so Thursdays are my dream days. You might also want to try it on a Monday, because that is Monday, Moon Day, and the moon is, you know, great symbolism of the dream realm, of when things in the dark, not quite what they seem, watery energy. So, I'm just chatting on with nowhere to go. Very unchaotic, but maybe for the dreams talk, this is how it should be. Another key text influenced my dreaming not gonna lie didn't finish it because i only have it on pdf but carlos castaneda don juan and the art of dreaming 
So let us return to the kind of cultural appropriation decolonial thread. Carlos Castaneda, best known for the teachings of Don Juan. Um, he was anthropologist, I want to say, in America. Got very popular, I want to say 60s, 70s. My God, my fact checking is not on form. Um, people say Don Juan never really existed. I don't think it really matters because the teachings of Don Juan and the um, art of dreaming have influenced the Western cultural conversation. Castaneda has influenced Jodorowsky, uh, I can't say his name, Moebius, the great artist. So it's actually through um, one of Moebius is graphic novels, comics, that I discovered the Don Juan book, which in this Don Juan says that like the dream world is the second attention where your spirit goes on these adventures, adventures, mystical journeys. Hmm. So I don't really know where I'm going with this. I hope that you have some lovely dreams. I want to get out here in the sun because at the moment I'm doing what I do best, which is sat in my room, talking to no one in particular, but I would be curious if anyone has any other dream techniques. Oh, blooming heck, I forgot to say the most important thing, and I need to get a prop for it in a minute. But so, I'd just done my Reiki course in July, and I had a very interesting dream. So, I was looking at a tree, maybe a little bit like this one, but not quite, because that's a bonsai. Um, looking at a tree and it had like this scaffolding in it and I'm not sure if there was someone there that told me but I was made aware that that was an ash tree um, so then the next day I did some research on what ash trees are so the ash tree plays a significant role in like Norse mythology it is the world tree from which Odin hung for 11 days I want to say um, but then a little bit more research and this is very very weird um, so the ash tree is used for many different things mystically, but it's said in the north of England, those of you who don't know, I am from the north of England, in the north of England, the leaves of an ash tree would be young maidens from the north of England would put the leaves of an ash tree under their pillow to have prophetic dreams. So I was like, blooming heck, need to learn what an ash tree looks like got very good at identifying them. Winter is coming, so I'm trying to collect all the leaves. I'll show some now, hang on. They're all a bit crispy. Okay, I'm back with my leaves. So this is my finest specimen. Beautiful ash tree, which hangs above my bed. And then, so this is one of the leaves that I've pressed. And here is, as I said, a bit crispy, but this is a classic branch, if you want to identify an ash tree. So it's one of these where you have the branch and the leaves are opposing each other. I think they say about nine leaves. And then if you look, there's this little black shoots and things like that. That's how you know it's an ash tree. And now, of course, that I can identify them. I see them everywhere. But... I think that was quite a funny dream, related to dreams, very much personalised. Um, so what I'm going to say is, I'll see you all on a Thursday night, let's dance at the Sabbat. Bye bye. Oh, so I think this Thursday is actually going to be really big prophetic dream night because we all know Halloween this year on Saturday, day of the full moon. I just learned today from a friend that the 30th, blooming window, the 30th is big astrological significance, no sorry, the Friday, so Thursday night, I invite you to try and do some lucid dreaming, let's see what messages the astral realms have to offer. Thank you for listening to this rambling tale, the next one's going to be more structured.